Hi, in this episode I'm going to discuss the fate of pyruvate in aerobic conditions. So as you can see here, it has clay bonded to it to form acetyl clay as well as losing the CO2 and forming NADH from NAD+. This reaction is catalyzed by pyruvate dehydrogenase and inhibited by its products which are acetyl clay and NADH here. Process generates NADH, uh, which is used to generate ATP later on, and acetyl coa is metabolized further. Generally, it will go to the tricyclic acid cycle, but it can also go to things such as fatty acid metabolism or amino acid synthesis, the alanine, for example. Now, we've got a major problem is that pyruvate is generated in the cytosol by glycolysis, but the, got the enzymes for conversion of acetyl coa exist inside the mitochondrial matrix. So what we need is a way to get the pyruvate inside the mitochondrial matrix from the cytosol. So we do this by using an enzyme called a protein membrane, membrane bound clay. Membrane bound protein called pyruvate translocase, which it transports pyruvate along with one proton into the mitochondrial matrix from the cytosol. So it's a pretty simple reaction, pyruvate plus NAD plus plus clay gives you CR clay, CO2, and NADH, and a proton. It actually, as it suggests in pyruvate dehydrogenate complex, it's not just one enzyme, it's made up of three, which all have nice complex names, which pyruvate dehydrogenase or decarboxylase, depending on which order the reaction's going. Dihydrolipoil transacetylase and dihydrolipoil dehydrogenase. Now, this should say coenzyme rather than cofactor, but the prosthetic group is tightly bound to the enzyme, whereas the coenzyme generally is loosely bound. So, pyruvate dehydrogenase, we've got our TPP at the which and dihydrol, but no coenzyme. Dihydrolipophile transacetylase has a lipoamide prosthetic group and a coe coenzyme. Dihydrolipophile Dehydrogenase has an FAD prosthetic and an NAD plus cofactor. This just shows quite simply you don't need to worry about the actual mechanism of all this. Pyruvate goes in, binds the enzyme by a loss of carbon dioxide, gain of two protons, binds to TPP, moves around, moves around some further, binds to coash, forms acetyl coa, and then these hydrogens are used here. And this regenerates round. See the hydrogens move from there to the FAD there. And then to lose the two hydrogens in is a proton and one bound to NADH from NAD. Regenerates the enzyme, can be used again, so it's catalytic. Now the reaction is irreversible, meaning that pyruvate cannot be generated from acetyl coa. You can't all of a sudden go from acetyl coa to pyruvate. Like, acetyl coa can be produced in many ways, it's not just glycolysis, so one of the ways is by beta oxidation of lipids, but if you go backwards you can't go beta oxidation to acetyl coa and then back to glucose. So, the CO2 is removed by the bloodstream then exhaled, NADH is good used to generate ATP by oxidative phosphorylation which happens after the TCA cycle and the acetyl coa itself enters the TCA cycle and is oxidized to CO2 and H2O used to generate more ATP so it's pretty much just burned. The reaction is not part of the TCA cycle as acetyl coa can be generated by other means. It's not part of glycolysis either as also TCA uh, as acetyl coa can be generated in other ways. So, regulating this complex. Additional enzymes in the PDH complex to regulate it. Yes, you've got pro enzymes to regulate your enzymes. But they, they're not actually involved in any catalytic activity. They're just there to, well, they're just there to regulate how fast this dehydrogenase acts. So, Oh, and just to make things more complex, the regulatory enzymes PDH phosphatase and PDH kinase are regulated themselves. Now, this, um, this diagram looks quite complex, but it's not as bad as it could be. So, this shows p hydrogenase complex is inactive, and phosphoprotein phosphatase makes it more active. Now, this enzyme 
is made more active by calcium plus ions which is defined in the muscle and that makes it inactive and allows it to catalyze the pyruvate to acetyl-CoA reaction now as you can see here NADH, acetyl-CoA and ATP increase the how effective protein kinase is which means that you're going to get lower activity in pyruvate dehydrogenase complex so that the, the higher the activity of protein kinase the lower activity of pyruvate dehydrogenase the complex however protein kinase is slowed down by having spec coa pyruvate and nad plus so in states where there's a lot of coa pyruvate and nad this will likely stay active as long as there is calcium present. So, as you can see, the important regulatory proteins are NADH, acetyl-CoA, pyruvate, ATP, and calcium 2 plus ions. And yeah, skeletal muscle releases calcium ions during, uh, during muscle contraction for energy production. And during high energy parts, charge is off, so it becomes an inactive complex with phosphate bound. Low energy phosphate on binds becomes active. And that's it for this episode. Next episode, we're going to discuss diseases and regulation of the full glycolysis pathway. Thank you very much for listening and I appreciate your time.